one, two, three. Hello? One, two. Hello? Two, three. There we go. Glory to God. Well, let's do it again. Good evening, everyone. Are you good this evening? Praise God. God is good. Everything from God is good. And it always comes from above. I heard a preacher say one time, God never comes from below. So if anything's coming low and trying to get up on you, it's not God. God always comes from above, and it's always good. Always good. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. Well, I just wanted to let you know that uh, Pastor Don and I received word uh, Sunday night that uh, my Uncle Buddy had passed. And yeah, since I've talked a lot about Uncle Buddy and how people said, you know, you're going to be just like your Uncle Buddy. Well, listen, Uncle Buddy, he, he might not have started real good, but he ended real good for the years of his life and, and uh, serving God and serving the body of Christ. And uh, I thank God that we can all change in Jesus Christ. Amen? Thank God for that. And so uh, we left early Monday morning and drove over to deep east Texas, right on the Louisiana border. And uh, we were honored to do his homegoing memorial. And uh, I had told the staff of just a few weeks ago, I said, Boy, I've had Uncle Buddy on my heart a lot. And I just tell y'all, y'all pray for me. I just don't want to do that funeral. And I didn't. I, I mean, you know, I don't know. It seemed like it'd kind of be morbid to look forward to doing somebody's funeral. <laughs> I just didn't, wasn't looking forward to it. But, you know, when the time came, the Holy Spirit just mm, rose up in me. And uh, the anointing of God was just awesome. And I appreciated it and appreciate the Spirit of God in helping me. Jesus said he will come and he will help you. He will be your helper. So, you know, when you, when you hit a difficult time in life, and, and we will because we're in the world. But, you know, you don't have to walk this journey by yourself and just try to buck up and find enough strength or find enough patience or find enough temperance or find enough... Listen, when you receive Christ as your Savior, one of the things He did for you was He hooked you back up with the life of God and He sent His Spirit of life into you to help you, to give you wisdom when you need it. Ask for it, believe Him. And uh, so we got back last night and uh, we, we just had a had a good trip it was a long trip uh, but it was a good trip it was a safe trip and I thank God for that and uh, we we skirted a lot of bad weather but I thank God he opened the way for us you know and we didn't have a lot of bad weather to go through but I just want to encourage you walk in the spirit he's here to help no matter what it is, whether it's physical or mental or emotional or material or circumstantial, he's here to help us. And he will always lead us in the ultimate truth. And the truth will what? That's why he's called the spirit of liberty. Let's pray and let's get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the joy of coming together in your name we thank you for the honor and the privilege of holding your house up for the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ in a public testimony and we thank you Lord for your blessings upon every individual thank you Lord Jesus that you are the head of all things to us the church the devil's not our head. You tell us not to fear him. You said do not fear evil of any kind. 
and to pray that you would protect us and keep us from all evil. And so, Lord, we thank you that you've given us that provision. We, you are our high tower. You're our strength. You're our safety. You're our deliverer. And we do not revere and fear anything of the enemy. We, Lord God, rejoice in our salvation. We rejoice in our deliverance in you, Lord Jesus. We rejoice in our strength in you. We rejoice in our provision in you. We rejoice in life and life more abundantly. And Lord, we praise you and we thank you and we will give you praise. You said this was the will of God, that his house would be known as a house of prayer. And so, Lord, we are a praying people. We are a saying people. We are a living people and we are a rejoicing people in your name. So we just invite you, Lord God, and ask you to minister your life and life more abundantly to every person here tonight, every one of our families, Lord God, our church family that's not here. I pray that you touch them, that your presence be upon them and ministering to their lives, that you keep them safe and that you bless them, Lord God, in their going and their coming. And we thank you for all good things. And we believe we receive in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you tonight. Let's have a great time in the Lord.
Stir him up. Let's don't live by the way. Well, I feel like I could sing with that. That anointing is there. Let's stir him up. Praise God. Receive the blessings of the Lord tonight. That's good. That that ministers to me because you know what? I know how tired you are, and I know that when you get physically down, you know uh, the devil can attack you for one thing. But you know what? Your spirit man doesn't get tired. Now, it can get weak because you're not feeding it. But, you know, you can be physically tired and you can be, he, he's living proof. I know he's tired, but his spirit man is <laughs> alive and, and, and energized, you know. And from your spirit, you can energize your body, you know. So it's very important that you keep your if you're going through a hard time, oh, how vital it is to be praying in the Spirit and to be giving thanks and praising God. You know, he inhabits the praises of his people uh, to create that atmosphere and, and to keep that going inside of you because that's what will uh, get you through the rough times. You know, that's what will sustain you, you know. So it's vital. And, you know, the devil, he, he doesn't sleep either. And he's going to try to uh, do, he'll kill you for a hangnail if he could. But he can't. You know, the, the more knowledge that we know, then the more that we can activate that knowledge, then the, then the more that, you know what, uh, uh, he, he leaves because he has nothing in me. It's because he keeps trying to go after, he's, he's, he's trying to deceive you know, when you bring every thought into captivity, when you break that word down, it is uh, speculations, theories, arguments, you know. So when you're having an argument with you, then one of you is not you. <laughs> and uh, 
And if it's not of God, if that argument or speculation or theory is not leading to life, then that's a demonic voice that's trying to, to, to wrestle with your mind, you know. So it's vital. When, I'm, when I find myself there, you mean you find yourself there? Yeah, we find ourselves there, you know. I'm, I'm going with what's in my heart. It, that We'll get to this, and it's good to take. It's good. Uh, but it's vital in uh, your, your dealings that you recognize the enemy because his deception uh, and he comes in at weaknesses if you're tired or there's a weakness in your body or there's something going on it's vital that you recognize that uh, he's going to come trying to deceive you and it's, it's going to be and sound like you and it takes the Holy Ghost say the Holy Ghost it takes the Holy Ghost to rightly defy that. You need to tune in to the Holy Ghost. I, I think in the last days it's vital that we hear the Holy Ghost, that we're, that we're connected into Him so that we're not deceived. You know, it said in the last days the very elite would be deceived, but we're not those that would be deceived because we have the Holy Ghost inside of us, and we can stir that up. We can get in union with Him so that He leads us, you know. So it's vital that we pay attention to the Holy Ghost inside of us. And the way to do that is, is to learn to yield to the Holy Ghost inside of us. And one of the ways that you can learn to yield to the Holy Ghost inside of us is by praying in your heavenly language so that you can build yourself up, so that you become very uh, spiritually, get things get more black and white the more you pray in the Holy Ghost because it becomes more evident, that's not me. This is me. Do this, do that. So if you're if you're struggling, and I'm and I in my goings, you know, I, there's there's a, there's a warring going on. I heard someone say tonight, I've been in a real war, and it's like, and I bet you're not the only one, <laughs> because I know the demonic activities, and I know with where we're headed. Uh, as a church, as a glorified church at the end times and, and this fulfillment that, that God is, is moving in his church, that there are those attacks. So it's vital that we learn to yield to the Holy Spirit by praying in the Spirit. In fact, I heard Brother Hagin say this. We was listening to some tapes on our hours and hours on the road, so it was very good. <laughs> we had, to, had some CDs, you know. Uh, he was talking about healing and how uh, people aren't, well, God was talking to him why people weren't getting healed as quick. And, and the Holy Spirit told him two things. And one of them was that uh, people are slow to believe. And you know, uh, the way our mind thinks is this. I'm not, I, just because I know something doesn't mean I believe it. What I say and what I act out, that's what I will believe, you know. So knowing that, we may know some healing scriptures mentally, but we have not, listen, to know them experientially, to know them where they are effective from, for us, then not only just the mental, but I must say. You know, a lot of times when you start getting sick or you start feeling sick and stuff, sometimes you just don't want to say anything. You know, you, 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 it's just easier not to talk. But that's the time you need to talk. That's the time you need to say what God says about it. That's the time you need to let your eyes go to those scriptures and you put your eyes on those scriptures and you say what God, because you know, listen, I know when I'm saying it, then you know what, I'm starting to activate my faith, all right? Not only just saying it, then you know what, acting it out. When I act out what I'm saying from the Word of God, if it says I'm healed, then I'm going to act out, well, I'm going to act out as I am healed. 
if I, whatever you're struggling with, you know, I, I mean, God just was encouraging me today when I was, I was meditating and, and, and working through some things. And when I got the release, how many of you know the release is a real good feeling? When you get the release is when I had got some joy in me. And, but when I, before I got the joy bubbling up inside of me, I heard the Holy Ghost. Praise God, I can hear the Holy Ghost. And he said this, why don't you act as if you've already got it? And I went, what a concept. What a concept. Why don't I, instead of petitioning, and, and even when I was talking to him and saying these scriptures, the Holy Ghost said, why don't you act as if you've already got it? And when I started acting like, yes, I've got that, then the joy of the Lord started bubbling up in me, and I got the release because I acted out what I was saying because I believed I had it. Then I gave the Holy Spirit something for him to take up. See, he can't take up what's not been delivered by me. When we Talk to that mountain. What does it say to believe in Mark 11, 23 and 24? Believe that you have received it. When I believed I have received it, then I gave the Holy Ghost something that he could take up. And when I started saying it and walking it out that I'd already had it, then the Holy Ghost gave me the feelings and the confirmation that it was moving and working inside of me. Isn't that awesome? I just want to encourage you because I know when you, get, when you get in some pressure, you, you go, when's it going to happen? And, when, and, I don't, I'm not, and, and your feelings get, get really loud when you're in the middle of some of this. And, and all that is, is, can be law. Because you're trying to get God to do something. You're trying to get him to move instead of believing what the word says and that you already have it because the word says it. And when I act on what I've read and what I've said as if it's already, listen, done. Say done. What do you need tonight that you can say it's done? Yes. In Jesus' name, it's done. If I believe him, then I'm declaring it's done. And I'm going to act out. I'm going to act as if it is done. That's called, listen, faith. That is the Spirit of God moving on my behalf because I have released, listen, the Spirit of faith. So I just want to encourage you, it's done in Christ. Now, you find the scriptures that back that up. You say it, and then you act it out. Because, listen, you do not, I'm going to say it again, and then we're going to go to this just for a little bit. You're, you don't believe what you, even what you hear tonight, if it's not acted out, you, you don't really don't, you don't believe, you're just hearing it. All right, you can hear, there's a difference between hearing and receiving, all right? You want to receive what God has for you. And the only way to receive, uh, to hear what God has for you is to receive it, is to do it. It's very dangerous just to hear something and mentally you think you have it because all it's going to do is get you frustrated. It's when you take it and you speak it and you move on it that now you've given the Holy Spirit something that he can move on. Does that make sense? Glory to God. So let's quickly let's just go to this. Leaves are leaves are seed because you, you know that needs some explanation, does it not? Uh, are you sowing leaves or are you sowing seeds? Yeah, seeds easy I read ahead. Seeds. <laughs> so we're gonna talk a little bit in Genesis 2 24 25 and uh, it's talking about where we had the fall with Adam and Eve. And, and some of the things, when, first, when sin first entered, what happened? Because I think it's very significant. God talk, took me back to this and go, it's important to see 
where and what happened when sin, which is missing the mark, what happened there? Because that's still going on, you know? And so understanding the problem sometimes can be a, a very beneficial for the answer because he is the answer. So in that, let's go to Genesis 2, 25. And, it, and, and so for time-wise, it talks about when he put them in the garden and told them not to eat of the tree of good and evil. So if you, and if they did, then they would die dying. And so, um, so with that, when he put them in the garden, Genesis 2, 25, and they were both naked, and the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. To me, this is one of the key verses to understand uh, uh, about God and about the fall. When they were in the garden, they had his glory on and in him, the presence. Listen, they would walk in the garden with God. We were made for his fellowship. I mean, it's very significant that you understand your origin. It's very important that you understand why you were made. Okay? You were made for his fellowship. He wanted to have fellowship with you, created in his image with a will to choose to love him. Without a will, then we would just be, we, we, you know, without a will to choose not to, you can't choose to. So it's a very important that we have this will. I love what Pastor said. Uh, that, that has totally put another notch into my foundational belt. He says that man was created to, um, to be influenced, and that truly is. We were created like that balloon I had a couple of weeks ago, a container to be, listen, to be filled with the Zoe life of God. He wanted to fellowship with us. It's vital that we understand what we were created to be and what we were created to do, to fellowship with God and to have that intimate relationship so that he could be with one with us. Huge. And listen, because you were made that way, Anything else that's not that, you're going to find yourself lacking, right? So that was your original uh, uh, mode of operation. It was what you was created to do. All right, so when he said they were in the garden and there was not a shame, it's important that you understand, let's look at what a shame means or to, be, or to feel shame. A shame is being or feeling. This is huge. I want you to underline it. This is huge. This, this is foundational for you and your family and for those you come in contact with. Being, being or feelings of worthlessness. So feeling a shame and when... And when uh, Adam and Eve fell, then that's immediately, because he zeroed in, you know, he could have said a lot of things, but he, uh, the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of God, pinned this to lead up to what we face every day, all right? So a shame has a lot more connotation than feeling embarrassed, okay? So the, the getting into some definition, but then one of the main purposes or the things that, 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 uh, Shame or a shame is, verb, noun, is feeling worthless, to be disappointed or delayed, to feel shame, confusion, embarrassment, dismay, to fall into disgrace normally through failure. So failure and uh, d uh, disappointment and worthlessness is huge because in the fall, that's what came upon us. Sin is, is basically, listen, missing the mark, all right? So when we have been disappointed, when we have that worthlessness, then we're constantly missing or having the sin nature or missing the mark, all right? We, listen, you didn't get out of that. Every one of you in here have fought those feelings, why do I know that? Because you are a human being and you have, listen, you were born into a sin nature. As much as I love Kennedy or the newest baby you see, that baby has been born into a sin nature, a missing the mark. They come out with the feeling of feeling 
uh, needing to be validated, needing to feel worth, trying to find themselves. And here we are as adults still perpetrating that, still trying to obtain worth, feeling value, feeling significant. It's vital for a human because in that, in that sin nature of missing the mark, when we were disconnected from God, there was that hole and we have been on a hunt, the, the, the sin nature, to try to fill that hole and self trying to right the wrong And that's called self-righteousness because self-righteousness is trying to make us feel we're okay. And the journey of your life is a, a, a finding out of I'm okay or feeling worth or feeling significant. All right? In that hunt. And we all do it. And some people, their, their, their lineage uh, may have a certain uh, uh, propensity for uh, certain traits of uh, defense mechanisms that they run to in order them to feel their worth. But we all fight that in our, listen, in the sin nature. Now, praise God, there's a, there's a better story we're, we're going to through Jesus Christ. But we, we start out that way all right so you're listen I think it's helped me that I'm not so uniquely sick that I hadn't had something so terribly wrong with me or so much damage to me I don't know why I can't figure listen it's because you're a human that you have these feelings that you fight these feelings of worthlessness now listen you don't wake up going I feel worthless well you know maybe you might have a revelation uh but you don't, your, your subconscious, which is 95% of you, you don't think that. But listen, thoughts bring feelings. So you have these feelings that will take you to or trying to right itself. But the root of it is going to be that fear of the failure, fear of worthlessness, fear of disappointment or delay. Those are the things that you're fighting. You need to understand what your problem is so you understand what God has done for you. Let's back up. I want to just go through a few of these things. And they're on Genesis 3, 7, and the eyes of them were both open, so they had immediately had a sense of wrong. And listen, that, that's, 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 that sin nature is is what you've inherited, that sense of wrong. And no one likes to feel like they're wrong. So you can do a lot of things that, you know, uh, you don't you tell me I'm wrong, and or I am, I'm a worm. You know, you can go to one side or the next, but wrong is huge. And listen, it's important that you don't tell your kids. You don't give them that you're wrong. Don't shame them. Listen, we, listen, we fight that already. And the last thing we need to do is to shame and blame. Listen, don't perpetuate what the devil has interjected into our life, not with little kids and not with your spouses and not with anyone around you. That blame and shame is huge. The devil gets so much, so much uh, uh, territory out of that when we play his game. All right? So the, at the very basic, it's going to get down. The very raw feelings, the very raw things, it's going to be the worthlessness, the shame and blame. They knew that, that they was naked. So then they started, listen, so they knew they were wrong. They knew they had disappointed God, so they hid from him. Listen, then they started uh, sewing leaves together and started covering their wrongness, covering their guilt. Say guilt. Guilt is huge. The devil uses guilt because it's the very foundation of what we've been born into that sin nature that's trying to uh, affect us every day. So guilt is huge. All right? So they covered and sowed leaves to cover their nakedness or their shame or their guilt or their worthlessness. And listen, we've been covering that from here on. When you do something in order to cover your insecurities or to cover your, your feelings of worthlessness, you know, and we can do that in so many ways. You can spend on a credit card and just and spend as, and try to, to put enough 
stuff on your body and it has to be name brand because then I feel I have worth because if I'm having a Calvin Klein or I have a Dooney then that attaches me that I've got worth because the purse is worth and I've got to have that you know or I have to have the truck but it has to be just the right there's nothing wrong with trucks there's nothing wrong with Dooney's but if you are attaching the worth that you are somebody because you got a particular brand, you got a particular truck, this is what makes me feel good, then all that is is a fancy covering your and sewing leaves together. And it can be very expensive. So you see how we, we, we've all got that going on. And in some ways, you know, we can, we can try to do that. In that, on that last page, there's some examples of uh, of what we can what we do. Just some things that the Spirit of God pinned with me. Uh, these are some of the signs that you're trying to cover up that worthlessness, that guilt, that uh, disappointment, that hole inside of you. That listen, that only God can fill. And through Jesus Christ, He has quickened us or made us alive. He's brought us back into connection. He's been He has uh, been our a quickening spirit that brought us back into union, therefore being justified by Jesus Christ. We have peace with God. So through Jesus Christ, we have once again been connected back to him. Praise the Lord for that. But now listen, just knowing that, you need to experience that. Because if you're not experiencing that, then what you're going to happen is you'll have this mental knowledge, but you're not applying it to fill the hole or the emptiness or the worthless or your hunt for you to feel significant. You're not allowing this for you to have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit back in union with the Father because he created you to fellowship with him. That is your prime objective in this life is to fellowship with him because he made you that way. We are back in the garden walking with him because we've been connected with him. Now, spirit in our spirit, we've been born again. We've been reconnected. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. And he said, because of that, that he's made us righteous. That is back into right standing with Almighty God. And when you're back into right standing with Almighty God, then all that he is, all that he has, all that he can do, we are connected to that and we get to partake of that. And that is exactly, sometimes it's like, tell me, okay, tell me, okay. That needy, you need to tell me I'm okay. You need to tell me I'm okay. And the, the, the sad thing is, even if you did, because you wouldn't say, tell me I'm okay, but it's like, do you like the dress I'm wearing? Is that, do you think I look, does it make me, like, does it make me look fat? Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't even go there on that one. And, and so you can, you can demand from your spouse unrealistic expectations that they need to see that you're, that you need, to, they need to, you're trying to extract from them, you need to validate that I'm okay because I'm not feeling okay and you need to make me feel okay. How many of you know that that'll never, that's not going to work? No spouse can do that because if you're not feeling it, if you're not feeling, uh, uh, validated then no nothing no one else can give you validation you have to own what you are instead of extracting it from others but people do that oh yes very much extracting it from the world by titles or 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 degrees or you know the, the biggest the baddest or yeah, anything that's out there. See, we all have our, a unique area of uh, expertise. I mean, we can just doll the body up and put lots of makeup on or have the right pair of jeans. And, you know, and you think, well, what is wrong with looking nice? There's nothing. But if the motive of your heart is because I need to feel worth, therefore, you know, I'm attributing my value because I, I flat look good tonight then that's because there's this hole inside of you, but I love God. Yeah, but you're not allowing the love of God and the fellowship of him to call. Listen, the only thing that's going to 
that's going to fill that hole is when he tells you you are significant. When he tells you he loves you. When you give to him and he gives you. When you have that experiential knowledge of how much he loves you, that fills your hole. So when you're full of him, so what people say things about you? Then you don't have to, you, listen, you find yourself not reacting because it's, a, you know, that's, because it's not significant that you have to prove my point. Yeah, Arabian. Let's go over some of these because we, we and this is just a few, but we will hit your toes. Believe me, you're in this list. Quick to blame. I mean, you know, just quick because, you know, it's quick. Because one of the things after the whole covering the leaves up and hiding from God and feeling guilt, one of the things that we do from the sin nature is we will what? Blame. So when you're quick to blame, all you're doing is just showing the hole inside of you of the worthlessness of feeling insignificant. Now, you're not waking up going, I feel insignificant. All you know is you, it's, it's not. Listen, here it is. Here's a good clue. It's not my fault. Because inside it's like I can't be wrong. Because to be wrong, I would be a nobody. Do, do you understand? I can't be wrong. So you're going to blame constantly all right hard to wrong oh my goodness let's just go around here just for a moment let's let's let's, let's go around here just for a moment okay all right now I can sit down now hard to admit <laughs> that you're wrong when's the last time you apologize don't do that right now okay when you get home I just had to take a breather because that just nails everybody because we all have the opportunity. Now, you know, I can say my husband apologized to me not too long ago, so you know what? You're doing good. And I apologized before I got out of the car, so I know I'm doing better. You know? But it listen, hard to admit that I'm wrong. All right, you might want to put a check by that. Have to be right. I mean, have to be right. All right. Quick to point out others' faults. See, it's easier to point out someone other's fault because it diverts you from putting out your faults. Avoid to control. In here, so I'm just not going to. I'm just not going to. I'm. Not, I'm not going to deal with it. You know what? I avoid it because then it'll just go away. Does it ever go away? Yeah. Then why do you keep doing it? Not him. Whoever. That was four. Discontentment is a huge. Listen, if you fight discontentment, there's something inside of you. There's that hole inside of you, that worthlessness, that discontentment, that, that dissatisfaction. Listen, you're not applying what God has given you. All right? Have to tell others that they're missing it. <laughs> Let me say that again. It's like your God-given right that you just have to tell others where they're missing because he's always diverting it away. If I tell them where they're missing it, then I won't have to face where I'm missing it. That's what Adam did with God. I don't know. I don't know. That woman you gave me. Because, listen, you knew he was blaming when he said that woman that you gave me. He didn't say the woman did this. He said that woman that you gave me. I mean, come to think of it, you did give them to me. There you go. See, the woman you gave me. See, it's your fault. See how we... You want to give me? I wouldn't be here. I'd be fine. I mean, I know. Why didn't I mean? <laughs> All right. So have to tell others where the myth. Always in the hunt for something new. I mean, on the hunt for something. You know, it's pretty boring. You know, I mean, can you just be at peace? There's a good question. Can you be at peace? Yes. Yeah, say so busy you don't have to face whatever it is inside of you. That's why they make Walmart open 24 hours a day. For people like uh, that can just, I say busy enough, then what's inside that feeling? Listen, listen, it's not thoughts. Thoughts will produce feelings. All you're feeling, all you're feeling is the feelings. You don't, you're not, but behind those feelings is that thought. 
In fact, the only way you, you can recognize or go after it is for you to recognize those feelings. And if they're not of God, then there, it is resurging where you are feeling that worthlessness or you're not feeling valued, disappointment or guilt or blame or shame. Yes, yes. We're, 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 we're going there, Pastor. Absolutely. Because it's not just, re- listen, one of the big keys in psychology is they might even identify some of those things. But just identifying it, God says about you, but acting it out, believing it and acting it out, because that's what you will believe, and that's what will... Listen, that's how you get it into your, your subconscious or into your, your mind. You're not... What you act out and what you say, that's what is in your subconscious. That's what you get in there. In your heart, it's been put into your subconscious. But praise God, the blood of Jesus can cleanse us from an evil consciousness. Glory to God, we can use the blood of Jesus. We can use the word of God to cleanse us with the in fact it talks about in Hebrews, it's in the, it's the scriptures here, uh, that it will seeds of righteousness. All right, so using anger to control. It just makes me humble to God. And God, when I'm full of Him, then so what? What happens out here? But if I can't take authority, I can't take correction, if I'm so full of anger, all it's doing is registering really big this worthlessness that is screaming out at you. Controlling others. This is really, I'm talking about the very core of what faith is. Because in Romans 10, it talks about the righteousness of faith that says what you believe in your heart and you say with your mouth. So you can't have faith without understanding the righteousness and the character of him and how much he loves you in order for you to exercise your faith. He loves you. He wants to fill the hole up, but he won't fill it up automatically. He wants you to ask and for you to identify this is not of God. Me controlling my family, me yelling all the time, me having to extract from them that I'm feeling okay today, none of that is going to help me become more like him well why do I want to come more like him because there's a lot more he wants to show you the power of the Holy Ghost inside of you what about his his resonating power of the Holy Spirit that gives you the joy of the Lord in the midst of whatever you're going through that he that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus here it is When I acknowledge what he's made me, then the empowerment of faith becomes effective inside of me. When I own that I am his beloved, when I own that the power of God is inside of me and he's here to help me. And he sees me, listen, what a concept. He sees me blameless. He doesn't see my faults. He sees beyond my faults. And when I start believing, he comes and dwells. I, I like this scripture. You actually don't have it on the three pages you've got. Uh, John 14, 21. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him. Now listen, didn't he say he loves everybody? But now listen, in this, he's talking about him loving me personally. Those that, that keep his commandments. Yes, we're going in that. I will love him. And listen, I will, listen, manifest or reveal myself to him. That's what all of us needs. And so by me holding his commandments, holding what he says about me, that I'm his beloved, holding what he says about who I am in Christ, then acting them out. Listen, then he manifests, he reveals, he gives me the revelation. He, 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 
the the prayer of sow for yourself to your heart what you're saying, what God says about you, instead of believing the lies of the enemy. Uh, Proverbs eleven eighteen: the wicked work of the de- deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. Death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. James three eighteen, and the fruit of uh, righteousness is sown in peace by how he sees you, valuable, precious. So precious, he sent his son. Until I start valuing me the way God values me by the what the word of God says about me, I will not have any substance that will be able to sustain me when all hell breaks out. How many of you know that that can happen daily? When it gets really, like Pastor was saying, when we tell you what to do, you need to have. She heard that all night long. She heard that all night long. She heard that all night long. She said, You know what? This is God. You know? She gets up, she goes to ER. Many, many tests later, they come back and they said, You better be so glad you came in here. You have such an infection in your gut that if you had let this gone on very much longer, it would have been devastating for you. It would have been life-threatening for you. But you came in at the right time, and we can take care of it. Because, listen, she hurt the world. That's why when we know our authority and we know who we are, we will be the light that draws men to us. Then people that see and, and sense that you have that, listen, they'll come to you and they'll 